Coach, let's start with Damian Lillard, because if we go back to July, that is when Joe Cronin, the Blazers GM, said this. He preached patience. He said, if it takes months, it takes months. Well, it has taken months. So what has happened since then? Where does it all stand? And where do we go from here? Yeah, Malik, I think very little of substance has happened uh, since really that maybe the first several days of July free agency. I think mean, this has been an off season in the league, especially the last few weeks, uh, where I've seen this league shut down in a way it really hadn't the last several years. Mm. But now, listen, executives with teams are back from vacations. Their kids have started school. People are back in the offices. Their players are starting to come in uh, for the start of training camp, working out in facilities. So I think you can expect there'll be more conversation I think with the Blazers and prospective teams over the next few weeks than there were certainly over the last couple months. This is a deadline-driven league. The next real deadline or, or landmark of any real substance is the start of training camp. And right. I think you can expect I think the Blazers to talk with teams uh, again before then. But I think this is an organization that is fully prepared. I think Damon Lillard perhaps is also prepared for the possibility that this season may, this training camp may start with him in camp. And then if you're the Blazers, you wait and see what happens in the first 20, 25 games of the season to see what direction teams go in. Teams may become interested who aren't interested now, or teams who are interested may uh, be willing to give more in trades. And it also gives you the possibility certainly to start constructing multi-team deals, which is what a Damian Lillard trade might look like. It may not be a one-on-one -on -one team deal. Mm. But for now, we wait. Woj, thank you so much. Please do not go too far. It is hard to imagine that Woj mentioned trading camp being around the corner. Damian Lillard damaging the 11-year relationships he had with Portland. Everybody is back. The league is coming back. That means Chinea Agubake is back in the building. That means Richard Jefferson. He has been dancing all morning he long has. is here. Uh, we don't need a pre. We oh, we, we don't need a pre. Hit it, hit it, hit it. We ain't got the hit it, hit it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody is back in the building, and the question is, what building is Damian Lillard going to be in at the start of the season? So, Richard, if you are Dame, do you preach patience here, or do you apply the pressure? Dun, 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 I want 100. percent uh, I, I want to preach patience to Dame, mainly because of this. Uh, and it's weird to say this, but Kevin Durant showed us the, showed us kind of the playbook last year. They basically went to Kevin Durant, and you were one of the greatest players in this league, in the world. Yeah. We can't trade you in two months, in six weeks. We don't have, we need more of a leash to do that. And I think Kevin did it great. When Kevin left the Brooklyn Nets, they were in a great position. They got all assets. They was around, it was closer to the trade deadline. Mm. But Kevin Durant was a professional. And so if they're asking Dame to be a professional, go to camp, do the things. Don't change your request, yeah. but say, I'm going to be a professional and then move on. Can so we, I think it should be paid. Can we expect the, the joint press release? Remember July when it was a Kevin Durant signed the press release and the Nets signed the I same press release? That. We're all going to We're all going to do together. Be I, think, out I think that team is a perfect example. But first, let's look at these numbers because when I dug into them with producer Cesar, I mean, this is a match made in heaven. Yeah. You don't want to risk it with Miami and getting Dame because they were 27 to three-point percentage last year. He's sixth. People sleep on it. Sixth all-time and made threes. So he needs to get there. And if you're a Miami Heat fan, you want him there. Yep. And I think on the flip side of that Brooklyn Nets situation, you look at Kyrie. There was pressure there. And what happened, he didn't really go to where he thought or where we all sort of expected. It was Dallas, which may still work out. But I do think the path of KD being patient is much better. Right. Yeah. I'm so glad I have my sis back because she just segues us perfectly I got into you. where we need to go next. I'm here too. Barely. So much about Barely. Miami, about the Damian Lillard side of this. But when you look at it, we really need to dig into the Miami side of all of this as we say hello to our Tim Legler, who looks like he has been in Miami getting a wonderful tan, may I add. But when you look at it from the perspective of the Miami Heat, who haven't had the splashiest offseason, Tim, is it day more bust for them? Yeah, I think it is. And I, and I think now it's, it, it's definitely become that because of how much a public dissemination is going on about this particular trade. This is where we expect Damian Lillard to end up. You've already tantalized us if you're a Miami Heat fan. So now it's the Miami Heat. It's coming upon them to do what it takes to make this happen. Now, I do agree with Richard in that I think Damian Lillard has handled everything to this point in his career in Portland about as well as you possibly can. There's no need now to make it messy or be disgruntled or cause some issues as you head into training camp at the start of camp. 
just let this play out. As Woj said, as you get a couple of months into the season or maybe six weeks into the season, there's going to be some things that are going to change the landscape in the NBA. Typically, injuries, teams getting off to better or worse starts than we thought potentially. That means now that more teams get interested in potentially getting into this three-team idea involving Damian Lillard because I think ultimately that is probably what it's going to take. Right. And let's just be patient. But I think at the end of the day, the Miami Heat need Damian Lillard to break through. And I think Damian Lillard needs the Miami Heat as well mm. if he wants to worry about his long-term perspective and how he is viewed historically. Right, because Gabe Vincent gone. Max Struess gone for the reigning Eastern Conference champions. Ramona Shelburne is here with us as well. So, Ramona, I'd like to ask you, if you could, to please gaze into your crystal ball here with reporting as our backbone. Do you expect, when training camp rolls around in a couple of weeks, the league is just mm -hmm. starting to come back and things percolating here, Damian Lillard, will he be in Portland or will he be elsewhere or Miami? I think he's in Portland, but the question is, is he in camp? Mm. Hmm. He lives in Portland, right? Has a big house, just finished building it. Uh, car dealerships there, a lot of family there. I don't think he's leaving town, but I think he reports, and then there's a discussion about whether they have him in camp, whether yeah. he participates in camp, whether he'd be better off waiting at home in the big house. What is the latest on James Harden and the Philadelphia 76ers here? Uh, Malika, the James Harden situation is really largely unchanged since uh, Philadelphia called Harden, told them that they had tried to find a deal. They couldn't find one uh, to their satisfaction and that they planned to bring him back to camp and then the fallout from that. Uh, but the Sixers remain... Listen, they're largely, their you know, sole focus is trying to put a championship roster around Joel Embiid. Uh, their clock is ticking in a very different way than the Blazers. Mm. And I think right now, this is not an organization that's out. Uh, they, I think they have a much smaller group of teams that James Harden could even be traded to. They've really only talked to two teams, the Clippers and the Knicks. And I think, you know, very much so you would expect at this point uh, that leverage doesn't change uh, in terms of what other teams are going to offer uh, the Sixers. Again, training camp's coming. The difference is, I think Harden, once he gets into training camp, uh, what does that look like? What is the environment? Uh, how is he participating in all of that? And that certainly becomes, I think, the next hurdle for this organization. Uh, but the one thing you know about Daryl Morey, he doesn't like to do trades. I no GM wants to do a trade where they feel like they don't get value back. And I think the sense just in Philadelphia is uh, the best team we can put on the floor is with James Harden. Yeah. Uh, the deals they've talked about with they've talked about with the Clippers don't get them there. But again, there's a different kind of pressure. I think that James Harden can put on this organization once he arrives. Uh, but I, I don't expect this to be a, a significantly engaged front office hmm. between now and training camp. I think they start at least the beginning of camp with James Harden. Woj, thank you so very much for the latest on the James Harden situation. There's so much that, that Adrian just dove into that we need to get to. I want to get to Ramona's story from yesterday in just a minute. But Richard. What I do? <laughs> well, don't get me started on that. <laughs> no, we don't, we don't got time for that. that. Conversation like going that. Live to <laughs> the Knicks? That part. What about the Knicks? I mean, Woj is saying there's two teams, yeah. the Clippers and the Knicks. And we've spent some time talking about the Clippers. You got your music going. Knicks, again, this is a rare opportunity that I will tell you something. I don't know if this is the best move for you guys. You guys have been doing an outstanding job. Outstanding. Developing from within. Drafting. Getting bargain free agents. When you look at a free agent like Brunson, what you got him for now looks like a very, very team friendly deal for a lot of years. So, I think your chemistry and your growth. James Harden is going to make any team better, but is this the direction that you want to keep going if you're the Knicks? I think it works out great for James Harden, but is that the direction you want to continue with the Knicks? And the other side of that equation is obviously the Los Angeles Clippers, and that makes sense considering Los Angeles is his hometown. I know. I remember last year at the trade deadline, the conversations were like, we need help at the point guard position. He's a point guard. He's really modeled his game, remolded it to really push those assists where he's been like top five the last two or three so years, especially with 
with his time in Philadelphia. So you can say that fit could work. But he did say himself, as I took notes on Ramona's article, oh, that his best chance to win was in Philly. Mm -hmm. Me Hopefully you can keep that same energy with the Los Angeles Clippers, but they have a lot of pressure themselves going on. So here's what's happened in Philadelphia. James Harden and his teammates are fine. James Harden and Nick Nurse are fine. He's just not fine with Daryl Morey. And when they get to training camp, yeah. Daryl Morey's not in the gym. Amen. Okay, Nick Nurse is in the gym. Joel Embiid's in the gym. Tyrese Maxey's in the gym. And so the question for James Harden is, can you compartmentalize that? Can you do what Richard is talking about and play, reestablish your value to you put some pressure on either the Sixers or the Clippers? Or... Do you stay in Philadelphia? Because, as you just said, all season long, your best chance to win is probably in Philadelphia. And as Joel Embiid said, this summer, I want to win. And my best chance to do so is with James Harden. Now, I'm not going to call out any names here, but I have been a part of teams where the best player was playing at about 70% of his capability. He will play well enough to not devalue himself, but not well enough and to push himself to win games. So if you're saying you want a top running mate next to Joel Embiid, if James Harden goes out there, James Harden, we can be respectful and say at 75% of his of him focus, yeah. he is still an 18 and 9 guy. Right. If he's really locked in, he's probably a 22 and 10 guy. So if he goes out there and is like, hey, look, I'm averaging 18 and 9, I'm doing this, we're not winning, maybe you should trade me because he's not going to give your 100% all. But at the end of the day, the stakes are high. The East, I don't want to say it's wide open because the Boston Celtics are still up there and the Milwaukee Bucks yeah. are still lurking with some big questions that we're going Miami to get into a little mark. bit later in the show. Miami is a question mark. Philly has high stakes here. It is their time because the clock is always ticking on at Joel MB. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.